Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a closer look at the adiabatic process to pull it all together. We realize that the work done by any thermodynamic process is equal to the integral of P dV. And for adiabatic processes, we know that P1 V1 to the gamma must equal P2 V to the gamma, and T1 V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals T2 V to the gamma minus 1, remembering that gamma is the ratio of C sub P over C sub V. And depending upon what kind of gas we're dealing with, this will take on a particular value. So what we do here is we then say that the work done is equal to the integral of C V to the minus gamma. Where did this come from? How did P become this? Well, we use this equation and we know that this, since P1 V1 to the gamma equals P2 V to the gamma, we know that this is equal to a constant. So P V to the gamma must be a constant, so let's call that a C. And so we can write that P is equal to the constant times V to the minus gamma. At this point, we may not know what the constant is, but we can make the substitution and take the constant outside the integral. And then when we integrate V to the minus gamma dV, we get V to the minus gamma plus 1. I simply put the 1 in front, divided by the new exponent, and then evaluate it from the initial volume to the final volume. So we end up with this. The work done is equal to this in terms of the volume. But we want it in terms of the temperature. So what we can do then is we take the second equation and then realize that the ratio of T1 over T2 is equal to the ratio of V2 over V1 to the gamma minus 1. And then if we invert that, we can write as 1 minus gamma because we want to have the same expressions we have over here. So then we realize that if we now replace the C, the constant, by PV to the gamma, but then realizing that P can be written as such, right? P is equal to nRT over V from the ideal gas equation. So instead of writing C, we can write nRT over V. So this is the P, this is the same as the P right here, the pressure times V to the gamma. And then of course these two then simplify to gamma minus one as the exponent or in the denominators one minus gamma. So now we can replace C by what C is equal to, and we can do it in terms of T1 and V1. We do it in T2, V2, but we chose to do T1, V1. And then notice, if I then divide V1 to the 1 minus gamma into this, I end up with V2 of V1 to the 1 minus gamma, and this becomes a minus 1, because this, of course, is the same as that. We still have the denominator 1 minus gamma, which I ended up placing over there. And then realizing that V2 over V1 to the 1 minus gamma is the inverse of this, so I can then replace that by T2 over T1. And then multiplying this by T1, the T1 disappears here and I end up with a T1 on the other side. And then finally, realizing that gamma is Cp over Cv, and then simplifying that by having, having this as Cv minus Cp over Cv, and since Cp, and do I have it over here? Cp is Cv plus R, or with other words, I could write it like this. I can write it as Cp minus Cv is equal to R, or the inverse of that is equal to negative R. I can then say that this is equal to negative R divided by C sub V. The R's cancel out, the C sub V goes to the numerator, so we end up with negative N C sub V, and this is simply delta T, which is the de definition of the negative of the change in internal energy. So we come all the way around. We knew from the previous video that the work done was equal to the negative of the change in internal energy. But then you can see starting from the basic definition of work done in any thermodynamic process and realizing the two equations that are relevant for an adiabatic process, we can show that that is indeed the case. And that is how we can look at the adiabatic process in a way that we probably haven't looked at it before, realizing now that the work done must therefore equal the negative change of the internal energy. And that is how it's done.